It's springtime right now, but the heat of summer is right around the corner. So it's time to upgrade from my broken mini split heat pump to a brand new Mr. Cool heat pump. But the best part, this is DIY or do it yourself, which is perfect for me. So let's get going. This is the electrical disconnect for the mini split. Now I've already turned off the circuit breaker inside the house, but inside here is another disconnect. So what you do is you pull this and you can flip it over. And if you flip it over, then these copper tabs, they go just into a plastic slot and they don't actually make connection with anything. So that's a way to store it. And there's now no electrical connection. There shouldn't be any refrigerant still inside the lines because this has a leak. About seven years ago, I hired a local HVAC company to come out and install this Fujitsu heat pump. It worked well for about two years before its first failure. Uh, since then, I've had three separate occasions where I've hired different HVAC companies to attempt to fix this. In total, I've spent over $5,000 trying to keep this heat pump working. Uh, once that still didn't work, uh, that's when I tried to make some videos and do the repair myself. Still couldn't find the leak. There's a leak somewhere in the system. Uh, that's why I decided to go with a DIY route. So Mr. Cool makes this DIY uh, heat pump where you can put it together without needing specialized HVAC tools. So I reached out to Mr. Cool and asked them, to help with this video and they agreed so right, thank you free. mr. cool for that I built this concrete pad with these concrete risers in four inch PVC pipe to keep this up off the snow Here's a nice cardboard template that came with the indoor unit. So there's going to be a metal bracket that goes on the wall. And here's where they want me to cut out for the uh, refrigerant lines and condensate to go through the wall. So I'm just going to use this and go around here. And a few seconds later, I think I'm done cutting that out. Here we go. So now I can go put this up on the wall and line up this hole with the existing hole through the wall. Here's my existing hole through the wall from the old unit. So I'm just going to take the template now with the hole cut out. I'm going to line this up. The new unit wants a larger hole than the old unit was. So I'm going to line up the bottom and cut it out. And I'm going to drill a little hole right here in the center where the mounting plate is going to attach. There we go. So I'm going to use my drill bit and just put the drill bit in. Now there's no stud here, so I'm just on the drywall. But I'm going to use this as my pivot point. Now I can level this out back and forth, and then I can mark for the other holes that need to be drilled. There's some little arrows stamped on the template to the corners. Go, so now we've got our four holes. Now I'll put in these little drywall anchors. Right here is the stud. I'm going to throw in one more structural screw at the stud. With the mounting plate on the wall and the hole drilled, you can actually see inside all the cellulose. Now this is a dense pack cellulose house. 
and here are the studs and cellulose. This is what should occur if you have a properly dense pack wall. This doesn't collapse, it doesn't fall in on you if it's properly dense packed. This is the indoor head unit. So this is gonna go inside the house. And I have to bend these copper tubes out of the way so that they can go through the wall along with the electrical line and the condensate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And I was pleasantly surprised when I pulled this back, it looks like the copper refrigerant lines are wrapped in a steel spring uh, to keep me from kink kinking them. So they really did think this through as far as a DIY. Here's where the refrigerant lines came out the back side of the house. The condensate is on the bottom. That was an important part in the instructions. And I spray foamed all up in there as far as I could reach inside the wall cavity uh, using a low density window and door foam. I just screwed on this backer plate, which is the first part of putting the cover over the lines. Oh, wrong hand. I have some nylog. All right, so as you can see, these are custom fittings. The line set connections are complete, so at this point we need to actually release the refrigerant and check for leaks. So to do that, we'll take these two dust caps off. Now inside is a little valve and it has an Allen key on it, and they sent the Allen key with it, which is awesome. <laughs> so it says to slowly open this and you might hear a hissing sound. Yeah, a very, very slight little hissing sound there. It says open it all the way. Now we'll open up the bottom one and open its valve. To check for leaks with soapy water, or what I'm gonna use I have some leak detection fluid.
We're watching for any bubbles. Okay, up top, we're spraying these ones down and we're looking for any leaks and I don't see any. Now something that really impressed me about these refrigerant lines is they're wrapped in this metal spiral spring and that is an anti-kink. It keeps you from bending it too tight. And that's really awesome that they added that. In the package they included some sound dampening material to go around these valves. This. <laughs> It reminds me of what you might use in like a car audio to dampen the panels of a car. They included a little extra insulation. Inside the package for the vinyl cover came these little black plastic clips and I wasn't sure what they are for at first, but it looks like they snap in here. That. So I'm using this tape that they provided. It's not really a tape so much as a vinyl wrap. So I'm wrapping it around everything uh, right before I exit this vinyl channel. All right, so I zip tied it with a little clip that they provide and I have to finish putting this cover on. But right now this drip tube, uh, I don't actually want it to go all the way down to the ground. So I'm just gonna cut it off. And now that'll drip out. I don't want to put stress on these brass fittings. This whip has an extra red wire for 240 volt. We don't need that. Okay, red, white, black, it all looks good. So, just like the color photo shows us, So this is called a Smart HVAC Controller and it looks like a USB flash drive and this should allow for hooking up to your smartphone. So that goes right up in here. Now that everything's done we'll just flip this over. I'm going to go to the Google Play Store because there's an app for the phone, Mr. Cool Smart HVAC. We'll install that. So let's see if we can turn it on with this remote. Hey, it has a display under there. I didn't know it did that. <laughs> so here's the app on the phone. All right, it just uh, beeped and connected up, I think. I told it 68 degrees Fahrenheit in dry mode. It's been running for a few minutes now. Let's see what the temperature says. <laughs> 42. 
40, 38. This is in Fahrenheit. Four Celsius, zero. <laughs> I think that's it. As you can tell, it's very quiet. Uh, I'm thrilled it's working. I don't see anything leaking. I don't hear any hissing. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. So thank you very much, Mr. Cool, for making a DIY system. Uh, if you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.